Hey everybody, I'm Ambassador Larry Huggins here in Barcelona, Spain. I hope you're having a great day. It's a beautiful day here, and it's a beautiful day to get into the Word of God. This is uh, the, the Z train, so uh, all aboard the Z train. We're bound for glory. I know where you're headed, and I'm going to help you get there in style. Uh, the current series is called Honey from the Rock, and this is Honey from the Rock number 33, and we're going to talk about dunamis, power on demand for every situation. It's going to be great, but before we do, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the Word of God and for the people who are sharing right now. We're breaking bread with people in different places, and I thank you that you have the right people listening at the right time for the right reasons to get the right word to help them uh, immediately with what they're going through right now. It's a challenging time around the world and we need more power. Thank God for dunamis. And uh, to be a blessing today, I pray in Jesus' name. Well, let me see. Today is September the 6th and there are 60 days remaining until the cross out sin, sickness, and debt live miracle event. Uh, I will be posting a link to our registration page or landing page where you can get more information uh, and uh, leave your name with us if you want us to contact you and tell you how you can benefit from it. But this is for you and your loved ones, anyone who needs a blessing in the area of uh, spiritual blessings, temporal blessings, financial blessings. We're going to get a hold of God and we're going to take those needs and nail them to the cross in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're down to the end of the third chapter in Ephesians, and as you know, we've been going through the book of Ephesians, <clears throat> pardon me, verse by verse. And I generally like to take the entire uh, Pauline prayer at the end of the Ephesians here and go through it at once, but um, it, there's just too much information, too much honey in this rock, so we're going to take it one verse at a time, and then perhaps when I get through with the Ephesian prayer, we'll go back and do a little recap because it really is a good idea to capture the whole prayer in context. And it's a prayer that you need to learn, you need to memorize, you need to pray, and you need to know what's in it. So there's some powerful things in it. So uh, let's look at Ephesians 3.16 today. That He, God, would grant you according to the riches of His glory, not, a, not according to the limitation of the world's supply or system, but according to the unlimited riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in your inner man. Now we're going to look at a few words here. The first word we're going to look at is glory. Uh, you may know that to be doxa, and that's the bright Shekinah cloud of God's manifested preternatural power, supernatural power. Praise God. And uh, He manifests His power on the earth through His glory, and His glory is a manifestation of His presence and His power. Remember that Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of God. That's uh, Romans 6, 4. Christ was raised from the dead. Now, you cannot think of a, of a situation that requires more power than to raise Jesus from the dead. Because he wasn't just in the grave, he had descended in the depths of, well, hell, if you will. And he had taken the burden of all of the sin of humanity, and that's a tremendous burden. And he had suffered in our place, and yet he's in the he's in the farthest place from God, in the furthest place from from heaven, and the glory of God raised him out of that deep, profound darkness and despair. It is a tremendous power. It's a real power, and it's a power that will manifest right here in this physical realm. Remember, Jesus was was raised up out of the dark domain. And then uh, he came out of the tomb and he appeared unto different persons. In fact, he was on the earth about 40 days and he appeared to a lot of people and spoke with them, ate with them, uh, gave them instructions. And then he ascended into heaven. And so uh, uh, I want you to understand that that glory manifested here on the earth. The same way it manifested uh, above the Ark of the Covenant in the tabernacle in the wilderness when Moses and the children of God were on their exodus from Egypt to the, to the Promised Land, the visible, manifested glory of God was present with them and it appeared to be uh, a cloud by day, a luminous cloud and a fire by night. So it's not just something that happens in, in the spiritual realm. It is a spiritual power, but it manifests here in this earthly realm. And that's really good news because you and I live in the physical realm and the earthly realm, true. We are spiritual beings, true. We are seated in the heavenlies in Christ. 
but we really don't need uh, all of these miracles in heaven because everything is a miracle there, but we do need miracles here on the earth. There's a little bit of wind blowing today, so you're going to see the camera rock a little bit. I hope it doesn't bother you, make you seasick. So let's go back to this. A glory. I'm near a school and all the kids just got let out of school and they're pretty excited about being out of school, so you're going to hear a lot of laughter and carrying on. It doesn't bother me. I hope it doesn't bother you. I like to see the kids having a good time and there's some really sweet kids here in Spain. They're, they're really well behaved and, and uh, polite and sweet. And so, uh, according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened or empowered with might, and that word might there is the word dunamis, and it is the tangible power of God. Jesus said, I felt dunamis leave my body. Your body is a capacitor or a vessel that will, that will uh, store dunamis and carry dunamis, and it's on demand. Uh, it was dunamis in the bones of Elisha that uh, raised up the dead Moabite when he was let down into Elisha's grave or sepulcher and touched uh, Elisha's bones. There was a power resident in those bones. I, I think of it as being like a capacitor. A capacitor is a device that has the ability to, to uh, store a charge. And you can charge up a capacitor, just different size capacitors, they're big ones and little ones. And they store electricity and the electricity is released at once in a surge and uh, if you were to grab a hold of a capacitor uh, you know against the two contacts you would get you would find out about uh, some natural electrical power well the Moabite found out about divine power because he touched Elisha's bones and that power that was stored in those bones flowed into the Moabite's body and absolutely raised him from the dead you could say it was the glory that was resident in the bones of Elisha praise God and Paul said, uh, or God said, that special miracles were wrought by the hands of Paul so that from his body were taken handkerchiefs and aprons and delivered in the sick and evil spirits were driven out of them and they were healed of their diseases. So even a, a piece of cloth can be used to transmit the power of God. The power of God is an actual, tangible, heavenly materiality as real as electricity or any other natural force. It's more real because the dunamis of God is the power that stands behind all manifestation of power, no matter what the kind, electrical power, wind power, solar power, nuclear power, uh, or the original power is dunamis power. It's still the uh, greatest power, and it's in you. Praise God. So we're going to back up a little bit that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory, his doxa, to be strengthened with dunamis by his spirit and that word spirit there is the word pneuma in your inner man to be strengthened by pneuma in your inner man remember god breathed into adam's nostrils the breath of life and he was raised up he became a living man uh, the pneuma is the breath of god the life of god the wind of god on the day of pentecost there was a uh, sound of a mighty rushing wind that filled the place and it filled everyone there with holy ghost power and so you and I have the ability to receive pneuma, the breath of God, Holy Ghost power. It's interesting, but I read that a 17th century French, French physician um, was reading the Bible about God breathing into Adam's nostrils, the breath of life, and he had a thought, uh, I wonder if, if people can be revived by breathing into their lungs, and they begin to do that, and that's how artificial respiration was discovered out of the Bible. So you and I have not artificial respiration, but supernatural respiration. Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And I'm saying to you, God's breath is breathing onto you right now. So let's talk about this. God is strengthening you with dunamis on your inner man by his pneuma, by his breath. The breath of God is the life of God. It's, it's that which raises the dead. It's that which gives us strength. Greater is he who is in you than he who's in the world. Your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. God wants to breathe into your nostrils right now the breath of life and to inflate you and fill you with Holy Ghost power. Now then, this power, this dunamis power, this breath of God that's on the inside of you is greater 
than whatever pressure is on you in the world. Think for a moment about natural pneumatic power, pneumatic power or air power. The tires on your automobile with just about 30, 32 pounds of pressure per square inch, that's not a whole lot, about 32 pounds per square inch, can raise up your car and keep it elevated, a car that weighs a, a ton or a ton and a half, just with a little bit of air pressure. That air pressure is able to elevate and lift up that great, great weight. Well, the power of God on the inside of you that inflates you and makes you strong, strengthens you with might by His pneuma, is able to lift up all the burdens that are weighing you down. Praise God. The answer for the weight is on you is not necessarily for God just to take the weight off, but God to inflate you with His Holy Ghost power. And that way the weight becomes a non-factor. Praise the Lord. So many people are praying for God to send you know, to do something. Well, he said, I have done something. I've sent my power to you. So you need to take advantage of the power that's in you. Praise God. It's, it's more than enough power to lift all the burdens that are on you. Now, uh, I read up on this a little bit. And I'll give you a little engineering. These uh, inflatable industrial bladders that are used to lift great weights, they're just, they're just little rubber, sometimes reinforced with carbon fiber or something like that just little envelopes or pillows made out of rubber and they've got a, a valve on them and they can be inflated with air pressure and those uh, little pillows like that one of them just about six inches long can lift up tons like uh, three thousand five hundred pounds just a little little pillow like that you scale them up and they get bigger and bigger they are inflatable bladders not as big as you are that have been able to lift 700,000 pounds. And when I was a kid, uh, a friend of mine's father owned a, a, a tire recapping service. That's where they kind of remanufactured a truck and automobile tires. And we had a lot of fun with air pressure. We had a big air tank out there and we would get uh, a, a tube, a conduit, like an electrical conduit, and we'd get a, a valve stem. It's kind of a brass tube that's covered by rubber. You know, it, it's where you stick the air in it when you inflate your tire, that's the valve stem. We would get those, we'd grind them down a little bit where they fit right inside of that tube. And then we'd get the, this air nozzle from this air tank and we would give it a shot of air. And whoo, man, that valve stem would fly a hundred yards through the air. Well, let me tell you something, today, the uh, drug dealers down on the Mexican border have uh, taken advantage of that and they build air cannons just out of junk, just out of stuff you can pick up at a salvage yard or a, uh, or a hardware store. And they build these air cannons that will shoot a 30 pound bag of drugs uh, over 700 yards. <laughs> and so they don't have to worry about the wall. They just shoot this stuff over the wall. Somebody on the other side picks it up and runs off with it air cannons and there are air cannons that propel things long distances they are pneumatic lifts and these inflatable bladders that lift things and uh, i hope you don't mind this analogy but you're an inflatable bladder your body is the temple of the holy ghost and god wants to breathe into you the breath of life and fill you up with might by his spirit on the inner man so that you will be able to come up under and overcome any burden or any oppression that comes on you. Your answer today is not that the problems of the world will mysteriously disappear. That's unlikely. As long as you're in the world, you're going to have tribulation. But what God has offered to do is to strengthen you with His power on the inner man. These scuba divers who go down under the water, you know, water pressure compounds exponentially and, and the deeper you go, the more pressure per square inch is on that body. And so these scuba divers breathe compressed air that's regulated. There's a device that regulates the pressure. And as they go down, the pressure on the inside of their lungs is as great as the pressure on the outside and they have equilibrium. They're breathing compressed air, and they're actually inflated. They're inflated. And that 
pressure on the inside is pushing out against the pressure on the outside. Are you feeling pressure in your life right now? That's because you need to increase the pressure of God on the inside. How do you do that? By breathing in His power. Breathe out praise, breathe in power. Breathe out praise, breathe in power. Let me tell you how to, how to increase the power of God in your life. You'll receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I want you to think of praying in tongues as like having an air compressor that charges you up with Holy Ghost power, right? Uh, the Holy Ghost is the wind of God, the pneuma of God. And as you pray in tongues, you're receiving more of that pneuma, more of that uh, Holy Spirit power in your life. Shanda la bosikiri handa. That's your little compressor that compresses you. And uh, it, it, may be a, it may be a weak analogy, but it's the best I can come up with is that you need to get inflated with the power of God. Let me read it again. We'll close. That God would grant you according to the riches of His doxa to be strengthened, to be empowered with dunamis by His pneuma in your inner man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Greater is He who's in you who, than he that's in the world. When you get up filled up with Holy Ghost power, you hardly notice pressure. And then if pressure comes on you, uh, you can just very simply increase the, the, the inflation of God's power on the inside of you by praying in the Spirit, by worshiping Him. People who are always complaining about being under pressure, admitting that they don't pray enough. They're admitting that they're not breathing in the power of God and breathing out praise. They're admitting that they, they are deficient in Holy Ghost power. There's no reason for you to be deficient. There's no reason for you to bug, buckle or to be crushed under the pressures of this world because God has given you enough power to lift all of those burdens off of you. Just pray in tongues. More pressure, then increase the pressure of God on the inside that's exerting pressure outwardly. If you're having pressure from the outside in, then you need more pressure on the inside pushing out. Where are you going to get stuff like that except here from Pastor Larry? Praise God. I've got so many good things to share with you. I want to help you live the good life and be successful in life. And I know a few things. I don't know everything, but I know a few things. You see, when you've been in the ministry for 47 years, I just celebrated the 47th year of my full-time international miracle ministry back in October. And I've been going strong and I'm still going strong. You say, well, how can you do it? Holy Ghost power. I give all the glory to God. I mean, I have been through stuff. I've been through stuff uh, just absolutely would have crushed many people. But I was not crushed. You know why? I found out the secret of power on demand. Holy Ghost power on demand. Dunamis on demand. Praise God. I'm breathing the rarefied atmosphere of heaven. And I'm bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. And you can be too. So stick with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you as much as I can. All those who stick with me, I, I promise you I'm going to give you my highest and best every time I open my mouth. Praise God. Nothing I do is recycled. It's not uh, something I just grab off the Internet and repurpose. No, no, no. This is, these are principles that I've been taught by the Holy Ghost through the Word of God down through years of, of experience in the real world, and it really works. I've held miracle crusades around the world, and I... I tell you what, I have seen and witnessed what God's power can do, and He's not lost any of His power, and He wants to transfer that power to you. Praise God. So let's don't do any more complaining. Let's do some praising. Amen. Well, let me invite you to be with us at Z Church every Saturday morning, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. Write me, Pastor Larry, at zchurch.life. I'll send you a link and an invitation. Or just go to the website, zchurch.life, and you're one click away from being online. You can also watch us live on Facebook. And very soon we'll be on YouTube. Right now our, uh, we have archived messages on YouTube. They're not live, but soon they'll be live. And then, uh, of course, I want to remind you again about the uh, cross out sin, sickness, and debt miracle event that's coming up in 60 days. We're counting down. That's only two months. It's coming quick. And our amazing Z team are working uh, just like Trojans to get it done. What a great team. Hey, and if you want to be a part of a great team that's doing something for God, uh, you need to get a hold of us and we'll put you to work. We have uh, things that you can do 
it'll be a blessing and it'll bless the kingdom and it'll be a blessing to you because it's uh, it's very important that we serve. People who don't serve get very unhappy. People who do serve uh, are full of joy and full of strength and stamina. So do yourself a favor and begin to give back to God. And while we're on the subject of giving, it's a good thing to give of your tithe and offering unto God. And for those of you who look upon me and Z Church as your church and your pastor, well, uh, we encourage you to be faithful with your tithe. Of course, we know all of our members are faithful. And those of you who are enjoying uh, the good word of God that we share, uh, then we're going to we're going to ask you to reciprocate. There's going to be a link in the comments here. Click on that link and do something for God. We've been doing this a long time, and we're going to keep doing it. We're good ground. You've got some good seed that's going to produce a great harvest once you plant it. All right, I think that's about enough for today, and we will see you tomorrow. And we'll go further into this Ephesians uh, prayer, this uh, Pauline prayer in Ephesians. And uh, we'll talk about verse 17. We may even talk about verse 18. We'll see how far we get. All right, my brother and my sister, I love you. Adios de Barcelona, España.